Life Audio. Experiencing God's silence can sometimes be very difficult. And as believers, sometimes that leaves us not just frustrated, but wondering maybe what we did wrong or what we could be doing differently. Because when we're, especially when we're going through something difficult, that's the very moment that we need God's voice to be loud and clear. And quite often, that's just not the case. So, what do we do about that? Well, we're going to talk about that today in today's episode. After a word from our sponsor, we're going to dive into it. Stay tuned. This podcast is supported by Morgan Stanley. At Morgan Stanley, old school hard work meets bold new thinking to help you see untapped possibilities and relentlessly work with you to make them real. To learn more, visit morganstanley.com slash why us. Investing involves risk. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney LLC. Why are Christians always so serious? I'm Barnabas Piper of the Happy Rant Podcast, where we take Jesus seriously, but not too much else. Subscribe at lifeaudio.com. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice, or if it's really your own? And how do you know the difference? Do you ever struggle to feel confident in your relationship with God and what He says in His Word? Do you sometimes feel stagnant or like maybe you hit a wall in your spiritual life? Hey, I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, missionary, author, pastor, and life coach, and I have been there. I too was doubting God's voice in my own life. I felt insecure about my relationship with Him, and I wanted to be obedient to what God was calling me to do, but I wasn't quite sure how to figure out what that was. I felt like I was wasting time trying to figure it out, and I just wanted a way to understand His will for my life. The answer for me was found in the pages of the scriptures, as I learned how to understand what they were actually saying. If you're ready to grow in your faith and to step confidently into the calling God has for you, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so that you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Grohl. Today we are reading through Psalm 77 as we continue our devotional reading through the Psalms. And if you're just joining us, we are going through the Psalms because that is the hymn book and the the prayer book of both Jesus and the disciples. It is the book that Jesus and the disciples refer back most to in the Old Testament. And it's a really good foundational way for us to understand God's heart for us and God's character and God's nature. Nature. So we are currently in Psalm 77, and every Monday I send out a newsletter that has journaling prompts to help you process the information and, you know, get it from your head and into your heart a little bit. And that's for all the current episodes. If you would like the previous episodes, so chapters 1 through 50, those are available in a guided journal, and it has both a link to the audio devotional, it has some journaling space, a journaling prompt question, and a key verse from that psalm for each day. And that's only $5. You can get it at shehears.org slash resources, and hopefully that will be a benefit to you as you are studying and processing the psalms, because really the goal is not for you just to listen to this podcast episode and then, you know, go go on with your life, but it's really to help you understand how this information in the pages of scripture help us to better understand God and to better understand what he wants us to do and how he wants us to act. So again, you can go to shehears.org for some of those resources. I am reading from the NIV and unless I say otherwise, I will be always reading from the NIV for, for this part of the episode. So starting in verse one of Psalm 77, I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord At night I stretched out untiring hands, and my soul refused to be comforted. I remember you, O God, and I groaned. I mused, and my spirit grew faint. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart mused, and my spirit inquired, Will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? 
Then I thought, to this I will appeal, the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will meditate on all your works and consider all your mighty deeds. Your ways, O God, are holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. The water saw you, O God. The water saw you and writhed. The very depths were convulsed. The clouds poured down water. The skies resounded with thunder. Your arrows flashed back and forth. Your thunder was heard in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and quaked. Your path led through the sea. Your way through the mighty waters. Though your footprints were not seen, you led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. So like I said at the beginning of this psalm, this psalm is essentially one where we see this idea where God's presence is with us when we're going through hard times, even if we can't hear his voice or we can't immediately see his footprints, he is still there. And we've talked about this in the past, like sometimes we have to go by what we know and not what we feel because our, our feelings are not necessarily good indicators of the truth. And so the themes that we see in this passage is how God always leads through those moments, even if we can't directly see him. Perhaps our emotions are clouding things or perhaps sin is clouding things, but God is always present. He never leaves us alone. And even if he is, if it's a season where he is not immediately recognizable, he does put people in our lives to help us because sometimes like my kids say, we need people with skin on. Um, you know, there have been so many times throughout my life where I may not be able to necessarily recognize God in that season because of maybe it's grief or pain or, you know, various chaos, various different reasons, but God will send different people, different shepherds into my life to remind me of his care for our lives. And so that's what we're seeing here in this psalm. Now, while this psalm is traditionally looked at as an individual lament prayer, it could have also been used as a corporate psalm in, in other seasons, but initially it was written as an individual prayer lament. We're also starting to see here in Psalm 77 and what will play out over the next couple Psalms, like 77 through 80, is this theme of God as the shepherd. So Remember, this is the time frame of the Babylonian exile, meaning they were in captivity, essentially. They were, they were in Babylon being held against their will. And so this idea of the shepherd becomes particularly relevant in the next couple chapters. The Lord has acted as Israel's shepherd. Remember, he led them out of Egypt. He led them through the Red Sea. And now he is punishing their enemies and eventually is going to restore them. And so this theme was really intended to bring a, a sense of peace and comfort to the people that were living in Babylon as exiles. Because you have to remember, in that society, everybody knew what a shepherd was. Everybody knew intimately how a shepherd would care for his his flock, his sheep. And so there was a very big sense of comfort when hearing about this shepherd language. And so... Um, we're going to see that theme rise up a couple different times in the next couple of chapters. So keep that in mind when you're hearing those kinds of, of um, metaphors. The thing that I think is important is, or one of the things I think is important is to recognize that this theme of the shepherd in this little group of Psalms here for the next couple of Psalms, it comes at a time where they were really soul searching and they were being humbled. And I mean, you could even say it was a time of humiliation for them. And while we know the end story and, and what's going to end up happening with Israel, you have to remember at the time they didn't, they did not, they did not know what their future held. They did not know how the story was going to play out. And so they were really at a place where they were seeking the Lord and, and wanting to hear his voice and wanting to hear his direction. And they were, while they were in that posture, they were not immediately able to see God's hand. 
what we can see, you know, 2020 vision backwards, what we can see is that God never removed his hand. But if you can imagine how that would have felt for them, not knowing when they were going to be released from captivity, I imagine it feels very similar to the things that we go through. Now, obviously not to the same extent. We're not exiles in captivity. But, um, you know, I can certainly identify with the idea of humiliation or soul searching. And many of us can. I mean, many of us have been places in our lives where we have to rely on God as the shepherd because we're in a place where we've tried to do it on our own and we've really, really messed up. A couple things I want to point out as we're reading. Um, In verse 3, where it says, I remembered you, O God, and I groaned. I mused and my spirit grew faint. I remembered you is what the NIV uses, but that word has been translated a couple different ways depending on what version you're reading. I meditated is what you'll sometimes read. But that original text, the original word, it really is more of used in the sense of pleading. And so the sense of this word is really like I pleaded with all my strength until I was exhausted. And to me, that is such a picture of versus saying, I remembered you, O God, and I groaned. I I have had seasons of my life or things that I have been praying for or seeking God about. And I remember pleading to the point where my strength was gone and I was exhausted. I remember being on, you know, when we were going through our failed adoption, um, before we knew things were over towards the end there, I remember being on the floor of my downstairs family room in our basement, just praying and weeping and just pleading with God. And that place of desperation is what I think they're trying to get at it by using that word pleaded. Um, I think that means a little, it's a little bit more clear versus saying I remembered or meditated. And of course, you know, the psalmist is going through a season of just agony. He says, you know, you kept my eyes from closing. He's accusing God of depriving him of sleep even. And I I think it's interesting that when we are dealing with consequences of our own behavior and choices, we have this tendency to blame God. And that is such a human emotion. I mean, we're even seeing it all the way back in the Psalms. It's something that humanity has struggled with for a long time. I actually think we're going to take a quick break here for a minute and we're going to hear a word from our sponsor. And then when we come back, we'll finish the rest of the psalm. Stay tuned. This podcast is supported by Morgan Stanley. At Morgan Stanley, we see the world with the wonder of new eyes, helping you discover untapped possibilities and relentlessly working with you to make them real. Because grit and vision working in lockstep puts you on the path to your full potential. Old School Grit, New World Ideas, Morgan Stanley. To learn more, visit morganstanley.com slash why us. Investing involves risk. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC. Hey there, it's Nicole Yunus, host of the How to Study the Bible podcast, where every single week we join together to encounter God through his word. You can subscribe at lifeaudio.com. So as we go throughout the rest of the psalm, it, it I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory in the emotion that we see where it goes through just this sense of reminding God and talking about uh, just feeling rejected and, you know, talking about, you know, God, have you forgotten me? Are you going to reject me forever? Has your love vanished forever? And I don't mean to chuckle, but I think, um, I'm thinking about this in terms of a parent, even, you know, when my children were little and we would have to do things like time out. Um, my one daughter, we would put her in time out and we, she would shout things like that from her room. Like, don't you love me anymore? Are you going to keep me in here forever? That's kind of the attitude of the heart that this feels like to me. And of course, as a parent, I remember thinking like, okay, you're dealing with the consequence of your own actions right now. And as a loving, just parent, I have to allow you to deal with those consequences in order for you to understand. But the goal and the eventual outcome of that was a restoration where I brought her close and we, you know, restored that moment between the two of us. Um, I think that's very similar to what we're seeing here, where we can see this reconciling that happens between God and Israel. But in the meantime, there's some complaining that they're doing. There's this sense that they are just feeling like they cannot hear, they cannot hear his voice. <laughs> 
And while this psalm is describing the psalmist as being in deep trouble and crying out to God, um, we, and we understand that the psalmist is feeling like God is not responding, at least in the timing that he would prefer. I, I think we can identify that. And when we inevitably find ourselves in a similar situation, we can look at what happens in the second half of the psalm as an example of what to do. The psalmist continued to call on God day and night and then started rehearsing and remembering all the ways that God had shown his love in the past. And I think that is the key for us because for us as believers, we know what God did for us through his son, Jesus, making this way for us to have a restored relationship with him. And so we have this assurance that, that God loves us so much that he didn't even spare his own son. I mean, that's, that's the restoration plan that God had for us. And so what we see is the psalmist rehearsing some of those things over and over again. And that becomes a clue for us where we can rehearse the things that we know that God does. And we can have this foreshadowing um, that I think that the Israelites didn't even have. I mean, they, they did not, I mean, of course they had faith in God and they had faith that he was going to rescue them, but they didn't know exactly how it was going to happen. They didn't have the advantage that we have. And so I, I think the other the thing that's really helpful when we rehearse the things that God has done, and I've, I've heard this taught a lot of different ways, but for me, what it has done is, you know, it's almost like looking at stepping stones. If you've ever walked through like a garden path where there's stepping stones and you, you go from one stone to the next stone to the next, about halfway through that path, you can turn around and you look to see where you were and you can see the, the stones that you, where you were standing previously. And I think sometimes our walk with the Lord is like that, where you know, we're trying to go stone to stone and sometimes, you know, maybe the next step is is a little bit farther away or it's a little bit harder to reach or maybe it's, you know, dark because it's overgrown with grass or, you know, whatever you want to use for that metaphor. But you can turn around and you can see where you're at and you can have a confidence of remembering that God was there for you. And what we know, remember, if God is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, we know that if he's faithful and if he's been faithful in the past, he will be faithful in the future. And, you know, faith is described as a lot of things. One of the th- ways that we always describe it to the children that I think is really helpful is it's almost as if you're in that dark, you, you know, you're going through that pathway through the garden in the dark and you have a flashlight in front of you, but the flashlight only leads you to the next step that's in front of you. And sometimes you don't even know where that next step is, where the next stone is. And sometimes you have to actually take a step before you see where you're, you're supposed to land, where your feet are supposed to go. And I think that sometimes that very well summarizes our spiritual lives. And I don't mean to oversimplify it, but I love the example we see here where the psalmist, instead of just staying in this place of just exhaustion and, um, you know, desperation, instead he starts rehearsing all of the things that God has done. And to me, that seems to be the antidote for those moments where we're feeling his voice is not clear enough. And when we start recognizing his pattern of behavior in our lives, the way he has acted traditionally in our lives, we can start to understand how he's going to work in the future. So I think that's a really important point to point out that I want to make sure you don't miss. That context of rehearsing what God has done, it is in essence a form of worship. And I think that brings me to another point that we understand God better when we're looking through the context or the lens of worship, because it's not about what God can do for us. It's about praising him for who he is. We're praising him for the historical things we've seen God do both throughout the pages of scriptures and in our own lives. We're worshiping and praising him for who he is, whether we do or do not get an immediate answer over our situation, we can still praise God. And I, I think that once we get to that place, perhaps the individual circumstance may not change, but there's something in us that changes. You know, we talked about this in depth when we did our worship week, when we went through the spiritual disciplines, where we learned that the context of worship changes things for us. It changes our perspective. And even if the circumstances don't change, it changes something about us. And so I want to remind you of that. And if you want to learn more about that. You can go back to that week of worship, but worship should be the lens that we look through when we are in this place of just really feeling stuck or like we're not hearing from the Lord and we're suffering. 
Because more often than not, what happens is, is when we get to the other side of that difficulty, even if it's not immediate, maybe it's years later, but we can look back to that season of our lives and we can see God's hand. We, we may not have felt it at the time, but we can see it in retrospect. And so I have to remember that when I'm going through something difficult. And I think that, again, we've talked about this a couple of times this week, getting to that place where we can say, God, I don't understand, but I trust you. I don't understand, but I trust you. Because when you get to the other side and you look back, you can see God's hand where he was putting you into place or closing certain doors to protect you or whatever it was. There's this sense of the good shepherd who is keeping you on this path, even if you don't understand why you can't veer off of it or if he's not responding when you're when you're complaining about you know where he's calling you to go or doors that are closing or even doors that are opening sometimes that silence is just a call to trust him and to lean in and to worship and trust him because he's faithful and he's trustworthy so given that insight i'm going to go ahead and start reading again from verse one i cried out to god for help i cried out to god to hear me When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. At night, I stretched out untiring hands, and my soul refused to be comforted. I remembered you, O God, and I groaned. I mused, and my spirit grew faint. You kept my eyes from closing. I was too troubled to speak. I thought about the former days, the years of long ago. I remembered my songs in the night. My heart mused, and my spirit inquired, Will the Lord reject forever? Will he never show his favor again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? Then I thought, to this I will appeal, the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will meditate on all your works and consider your mighty deeds. Your ways, O God, are holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who performs miracles. You display your power among the peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeem your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, O God. The waters saw you and writhed. The very depths were convulsed. The clouds poured down water. The skies resounded with thunder. Your arrows flashed back and forth. Your thunder was heard in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and quaked. Your path led through the sea, your way through the mighty waters, though your footprints were not seen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. God, we thank you that you are the shepherd. And even when we can be sheep that are stubborn or wounded sheep that are complaining because we don't hear you or maybe even understand what you're doing. God, help us to trust you as a good shepherd. Help us to look back through our lives and throughout the pages of the scripture to remember that you are a God that is faithful. You are a God that cares for us. You are a God that is good and that does good. Lord, in those moments where you feel far away, help us to remember that you are never far away, but in fact, you were closer than a brother. You were in our hearts, um, working in and through us, even when we don't necessarily feel that. God, help us to lean into what we know instead of looking to what we feel. I thank you so much for the pages of scripture and just this reminder in Psalm 77 to lean into this posture of worship where we can change our perspective, even if our circumstances don't change. God, we love you and we thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Hey friend, do you feel like you need a little one-on-one? My goal for the She Hears Ministry, the Hearing Jesus podcast, all the resources that we have is to really help you learn how to hear God's voice so that you can be confident in your relationship with him. And if you're struggling to learn how to identify or even overcome the barriers that you have in your life to growth, I want to be able to walk through that with you. Did you know that I'm a Christian life coach? Maybe you're struggling with something and you need some objective biblical insight or opinions, or maybe you need to work through something that feels just a little bit too heavy to do on your own. I would love to walk through that with you and land on some practical ways to achieve that goal. And so I have some limited coaching opportunities. If you go to shehears.org, there's a section where you can schedule some one-on-one time with me. I have Mondays and Fridays open right now going into the new year. So I pray that if that is something that you need, that you've been praying about, that it would be an opportunity for you to take advantage of some one-on-one time with me. And again, my heart is really to help you lean into whatever it is that God is calling you to do. I pray that that's a blessing for you.
I want to take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on the podcast. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you for God's call in your life, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you this week. Know that you are loved, you are cherished, and you are His. This podcast is supported by Morgan Stanley. At Morgan Stanley, we see the world with the wonder of new eyes, helping you discover untapped possibilities and relentlessly working with you to make them real. Because grit and vision working in lockstep puts you on the path to your full potential. Old school grit, new world ideas. Morgan Stanley. To learn more, visit morganstanley.com slash why us. Investing involves risk. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC.